Yeah, well, I, I like, like you said, I think stance and grip is the easiest thing for a coach to manage and to, you know, to see and to correct because the athlete's not moving at the point where they're, you know, we're just setting, setting up their stance and grip. And I think it has the biggest impact on their ability to actually execute the dynamic phase of the movement correctly, or at least set them up for success to do so. Um, and so I think even just thinking of the, the nine foundational movements of CrossFit, looking closer at the stance and grip, and as it relates to each individual, uh, makes, makes a big difference. Now, I think the thing that you were referencing, we were talking about a squat stance. The standard squat stance is going to be a shoulder width stance for our heels with our toes slightly turned out. Now, I think the thing that I brought up was that we look at the stance and then that works for most people most of the time, but based on what we see them do movement wise, that's going to dictate whether they can or should be a little bit in or can or should be a little bit out. And kind of as you alluded to a little bit, I, I look at all my athletes pretty much just in, just in angles and it takes me back to like geometry and trigonometry, uh, which I enjoyed, which I guess makes it fun to, to, to watch people move and try to overlay those concepts that I learned there into their human movement. But uh, as you were relating to the squat and the stance position, if you think about the athletes like feet, what will be stacked on top of their feet are going to be their knees as they squat, essentially, right? They'll be tracking the toes, but on top of the knees, as they squat down, their hips are going to go back. And in order to stay balanced, depending on how far their hips go back, their chest will have some sort of, of forward lean. Now, obviously, we want a more upright torso for the majority of our squats. So that's going to make us more efficient, especially when we're doing anything beyond an air squat. Um, and so if we think of that and we, we look at those angles, we have the potential, like the closer the feet are or the longer the femurs are, the farther the hips are going to have to go back and the farther the hips go back, the farther the chest is going to come forward, which is going to make an immature squat um, and therefore probably a, a less efficient squat. So with an athlete that either is trying to squat too narrow, an athlete that has long femurs, an athlete that just has an immature squat in general by trying to take their feet out maybe a little bit wider than that shoulder width stance will allow for their hips not to go as far back, um, which in turn won't force their chest to come forward as much to stay balanced and allow for a more upright squat, which ultimately will be a more efficient squat. So would you say most of the time, if you can get so, someone to go a little bit wider in their stance, it's going to improve their squat? I will say most of the time, the, the fault or the error that I see with athletes is they squat a little bit more narrow than they should be. I'll phrase it that way. So if, if you were to watch me coach a group of athletes more often than not, I'm probably widening their feet just a hair. Now, in line with that, what you also have to cue and try to work on with those athletes is as the feet get a hair wider, their knees need to be where they're supposed to be. And those typically aren't in that proper place either. So cueing the athletes to keep their get their knees out and keep them out is going to allow for that more, more upright torso.